I do. Welcome to Paul and Lynn's Wild Garlic Ride. We're just on the A601M. Just left the M6 at Carnforth in Lancashire. Carnforth. Now then, you might be wondering why it's called the Wild Garlic Ride. Well, of course, around this time of year, late spring, early summer, one of the many, many joys that there are, including one of the many joys of motorcycling at any time of year, but especially at this time of year, is the absolute, oh, beautiful aroma of wild garlic. Especially, you know, when you get near rivers and becks and streams and such like. Oh, it's just absolutely, you know, you're riding along and you're getting hooked on it. It's wonderful, it's just a pity you can't transfer and make smelly vision instead of television. One day they might invent that. So we're just coming to Carnforth. And uh, now this road here, the A6, um, holds many memories for me, personally. Because in the 70s, uh, me and my family, uh, well, uh, actually the 60s, uh, mid to late 60s, early 70s, up to about 1973, I think, something like that. So I was, you know, sort of seven, eight, nine, ten years of age. Our family used to holiday in a caravan. Um, sort of uh, mobile home uh, you you would call it Brian um, but these these were like static static as in fixed to the ground uh, caravans and you know of course compared with caravans today these were very very basic really basic um, and it belonged to uh, she was actually my mum's cousin, my auntie Edna, and her husband, Uncle Tom. Tom and Edna. And 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 they and we used to have the caravan for I think it was just a week. I don't think it was ever two uh, week uh, two weeks, but to get to it, you used to turn left. We're going right now. We used to turn left there at that at that junction. Uh, but but they've changed the road now, so you don't have to come into Carnforth now to get to it. And um, so we used to go to this caravan. Now just interrupting me, me tail at a minute, we're just passing the railway station, and it's very famous that railway station because Brief Encounter, the film Brief Encounter, was uh, was filmed there. So if you watch that film, Brief Encounter, I think it was made in the 50s, 60s, um, not sure, but if you watch it, you'll see the railway station on there, and it's actually that one we've just passed, Carnforth. So a bit of history there, there's an actual steam museum there called Steam Town, which is very, very uh, busy, well attended. We must go and visit that and do a, a cap camp. Right, so back to my tale. So yeah, we, we used to go to this caravan. Um, and, you know, to get to Carnforth from home, it, you know, it's only sort of 50 miles, I think, something like that. But, you know, in the, in the 60s, 70s, my dad's car used to, you know, go quite slow. Um, you know, motorway speed is 70. But my dad's car will probably be doing probably around about 45, 50. So, you know, you were talking, you know, probably an hour and a half to get there. And an hour and a half when you're a child is, um, is a long time. Of course it is. So, so we used to, uh, as I said, when we'd arrived, we couldn't wait to, uh, to get at the caravan. And it was situated in a in a oh just beautiful side of a canal, which is the Lancaster Canal. 
Um, and I think at one time it used to be a quarry, probably were a quarry because it's like in a, in like a, uh, you know, in a, in a, um, in a quarry, <laughs> um, with the um, hills, sort of rock, sorry, rock face on one side, which is by that time it had all got grass and, um, and you know, plenty of um, trees and things, you know, so it was very idyllic very select and it was just brilliant uh, the only thing I used to uh, I used to you know I had a, a bicycle at home um, an old bicycle I never had a new one and um, I wanted to ride a bicycle but there were never a bicycle there I think there were one year I seem to remember there were an old bicycle or a, or a three-wheeler or something there and um, so as much as I enjoyed my holiday there, I did miss my bicycle. Um, but there were like, there were things like, um, you know, there was swimming pool, which was an outdoor pool, which uh, you know, <laughs> even in on a on a hot sun, sunny day, uh, the water was bitterly cold, um, and I remember the floor of the swimming pool was like concrete and it was like all rough you know so so if you if you bang your toe on on the floor of the pool by golly it didn't half hurt um and there were these flags all around the uh, the pool and uh, i think there's a photograph uh, here uh, just uh, just get it up yeah there we are that's uh that's yours truly in the swimming pool as you can see these flags all around uh they were just they were just two foot square uh concrete flags you know and they weren't half shy now those that photograph those selection of the uh for the the, the, the caravan they were taken in 1983 uh, i've gone there on my honda 90 and um and yeah it were absolutely uh, beautiful so now the top left one is the Lancaster Canal the top right is the uh, swimming pool of course and the middle left is a swimming pool the top sorry middle right is one of the caravans the bottom left is the uh, the, the entrance uh, to the uh, park or caravan site as it were known then and the bottom right is where our caravan was so so as I say happy memories there but yeah that water is absolutely freezing cold um, and I remember buying a, a boat I think it was I think it was battery operated. I think um, it's either battery operated or clockwork. And uh, I'm sure it, you know, memory sort of, I mean, it's a long time ago. It's either, but I had some kind, yeah, I think it was battery. And um, I remember putting it on the pool and thinking, oh, you know, I won't be able to get it because, you know, I had my clothes on and, and, if, it, and if, if, if the battery stops or something, anyway. <laughs> It was great, you know, and um, and there was this there was this park area at the back of uh, far far side of the camp caravan site, and there was a big seesaw, a huge uh, seesaw, red. I think it was red. I seem to remember, and he'd had half a tire, car tire underneath at the end you know so when you bounce down it, it, it was oh it bounced you back up and uh, I remember uh, you know I weren't heavy enough to uh, make it go down you know to rely on on my brother and uh, in the early days my, my sister used to come along as well used to be with us as well so we'd be all on it you know I think Janice and John were at, um, at one side of the seesaw and uh, and I was at the other. So, <laughs> yeah, great memories.
fabulous memories. So this whole area, up to the lakes and including the lakes, is is it, it really is um, special, really special. So now we're uh, we're just going over the uh, the railway there that goes up to Ironside, and uh, coming in towards um, Silverdale. So I was just saying uh, earlier to uh, to lean on the bike uh, on this road just back, not not far from where we come away from um, Carnforth. There was a, a road sign, a triangle road sign, you know, like a like a warning triangle, and it was warning you of um, frogs, frogs crossing. <laughs> it just tickled me when I first saw it some years ago we were on a Northern Pan Riders ride and uh, which I saw this frog and uh, I thought wow you know I can understand them wanting to uh, preserve them or conserve them in whichever way is the right way of saying it but you know like it's a bit difficult seeing them you know if you do see one what are you supposed to do you know um, I can understand ducks, ducks crossing. You do. You sometimes see a, a sign warning you of ducks crossing, and at this time of year, we all the um, the ducklings. Um, you know, the other day in the car, in the works car, I was um, driving along, and uh, and suddenly coming a, across the road, uh, I spotted the, the mother duck and all her all her ducklings behind. You know. And it looked so cute. It reminded me of one of the Tom and Jerry cartoons. And uh, so I, I slowed down. I mean, I made sure that I wasn't putting anyone behind me in danger. But um, I, I wouldn't have. Uh, I wouldn't have been happy with myself if, if I'd uh, if I'd hit them. And unfortunately, lot, lots do get um, killed with, uh, with with cars. You know, traffic because it just. They just go straight across the road and they don't know the dangers. So, so we're in Silverdale and as I said these uh, photographs show um, at various points since 1984 um, various, um, various stages of um, erosion and it's, uh, it's amazing uh, just how much um, has taken place. Um, the first photograph uh, isn't isn't brilliant. It's um, from a an old sort of um, I think they were one three five film cartridges. I think I seem to remember that. And they're basically little square photographs. So. It's not very good, the lighting's very poor. And in 1984, of course, there were no digital cameras. Um, but anyway, it just it, it, it does show how much erosion's taken place. So the first photograph is from 1984, and um, right the way through to um, today on, on this ride. So I think you'll be able to see just how the area has changed in all that time. So, so yeah, it's a nice little place. There's nothing here really. Um, you know, if you just want peace and quiet, there's a hotel, uh, which is very nice. Silverdale Hotel. It looks like it's been all modernised and um, and done up. So. Right, so just over the cattle grid now. This this area does does actually um, bring very very happy memories back for me. Because um, in the seventies, we used to come to this area for our holiday at uh, New England um, caravan site at the side of the Lancaster Canal, and. Here I've included some photographs of um, that that time in the 70s, um, 
the lady on the uh, on the right on the bench there is is my mum and the lady on on the left uh, is Mrs Aspin now Mr and Mrs Aspin lived at a um, place called Yellen Conyers which is not not that far away from where we are at the moment and um, I always remember they had a dog called Clancy I think it was a Staffordshire Bull Terrier I think I seem to remember uh, Clancy and one of the things that really I remember about their house was the fact that they had a um, swing like a um, like a seat with a with a lovely f uh, floral cover over it if you will for for sort of sitting together two of you um in the sunshine and they lived in a bungalow and then we had a big garden and uh, as i've said before if we came we lived in a town in a three bedroom terraced house built in 1900 um you know it's it, <laughs> we didn't even have an inside toilet until 1974 so you know so to go to a place like Yellen Conyers where the bungalow with its all with its lovely garden and there was a meadow at the back which seemed to go on for mile after mile after mile uh, I suppose they might have built houses on there now but um, there was just nothing there just fields and fields and fields well as a child you know it was like never never sorry never never land it was absolutely wonderful and as you can see uh, on later photographs you can see the way that the uh, the sand has encroached on into the bay because all that area was all grass with these um, pools, pools of uh, seawater, and um, and there used to be crabs in there. We used to be, you know, getting uh, fishing them out and sort of, you know, looking what we're in, and we'd be playing uh, with our football, me and my brother, and um, the football would go in the pool, and uh, one of us had to go in and, and rescue it. And uh, the dog that we had at that time, uh, Kim, which was a Border Terrier, oh, she, you know, he he loved it. He he absolutely loved it out there, as you can imagine. You know, all this grass, wonderful, happy happy memories. And uh, to see me sat on on the bench, which you'll see um, on one of the photographs, was well. To think that my mum was sat there uh, is quite emotional because uh, my mum's no longer with us. Uh, we lost her in 2001. And uh, so, yeah, you, you, you appreciate looking back at these photographs. So these are from 2010. The day that I was with Graham. That's Graham's Pan-European. No longer got that one now. He's got a silver one. Our Pan-Europeans just at the front, there we are, that's me. As I say, these are 2010. That's Gloria, our Honda Pan. Beautiful bike. Right, bang up to date. This is 2015, as I say, this is where my mum and Mrs Aspin were sat. Um, and as you can see, the erosion that's uh, taken place is quite, quite amazing, really. Amazing. Set so used to go on for miles where that sand is there. Of course this bit, sorry about the slight blurriness, this bit um, hasn't changed out of those houses. There we are, there's Sylvie. It's a nice place, nice place, nice, lots of fresh air. And across there, right across there, that's Grange Over Sands. And here is an aerial photograph taken from Google 
Joy more can be. Treacherous sands. People have died there. Gone out and got stuck. What a way to go. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, part one of this little series. Um, look out for part two. Where we leave Silverdale. And head for Armside. Okay thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.